Wars Rectangular back, this time with another review of a custom action figure that I made. Here we have the Deep Sea Armor or Model 6 Iron Man suit. And uh, yeah, I didn't think it would be, well, it might be a while before Hasbro gets around to making this version of Iron Man and I really wanted to have the most robust Hall of Armor display uh, in the community and I uh, figured these customs wouldn't be too difficult for me to do, you know, I'm not the world's best customizer, but uh, I can do a little bit of sculpting and I can kit bash pretty damn well so uh, picked up a, a couple of Warhammer figures and um, figured that this might work out so I started off with a McFarlane Warhammer Primaris Primaris Space Marine Hellblaster figure as the base body I needed the um, shoulder pads from this figure to make my Model 44 and so once I took the shoulder pads off I looked at the base body and, and thought to myself hmm what are, I wonder what I could make out of this and uh, like a stroke you know bolt of lightning it hit me that I could turn this into the uh, deep sea armor with um, you know some small modifications so that's what I did uh, I had to find a helmet space helmet you know clear plastic helmet to use for this figure and used the Buzz Lightyear uh, 7 inch scale figure that is the oh what the hell they call this thing um, Spotlight series Buzz Lightyear figure that comes with the three heads and the jetpack. You know, they make a bunch of different Buzz Lightyears, but this is the seven inch scale one with the with the jetpack and the cat and the three heads. And um yeah, that one uh luckily worked out really well and also needed the head from the 80th anniversary. Iron Man that comes with the Alex Ross head and then you know I use the classic uh, classic helmet for that figure and um, yeah I started off you know disassembling the figure and um, for whatever reason I thought it was a good idea to well when I when it when I had to when I wanted to dye the Hulkbuster figure, I'm sorry, the Ironmonger figure to make my Model 44, I went ahead and decided to dye the Warhammer figure as well. Uh, dyed them both black and um, in hindsight I wish that I hadn't dyed this figure black um, knowing about the dye leaching out of the plastic. Uh, it took me a lot to um, wash out all the excess dye so um, and then you know clear coat it after afterwards before I could paint the figure so um, wouldn't recommend doing that in the future. I'm making a second one now where um, I'm just gonna paint it. I'm not gonna dye the, the base body but anyway um, yeah, otherwise, you know, disassembling the figure was pretty easy, and then the major prep was, um, you know, since I dyed it, I didn't really need to do much sanding. I trimmed the knee pads, um, that excess flared piece of armor on the top of the knee pads, I cut those off. Um, the belt was uh, a bit of a challenge, I had to cut the... Uh, flaps off the sides of the belt and then uh, take the pouches um, off the back and from uh, another Warhammer figure and uh, glue those onto the side onto the hips 
and um, the first one I'd made it uh, I was pretty aggressive cutting the belt off and uh, it got pretty damaged so um, I, I, I put that third I put a third pouch on the back to cover up some of the um, the problem areas and in the the comic figure it actually has four pouches but um, uh, I just opted for for three and then on the new one I'm making I'm just gonna go with two um, then I had to remove the uh, skull and wings off the chest and then um, once that was removed had to you know sand it and then add sculpt to fill in the hole and then add more sculpt uh, across the front to have a to fill in the the divot there in the front of the help you know the helmet area so it'll be nice and uh, symmetrical. When it came to the oxygen tank on the back of the figure, I took the existing jetpack that the figure came with, popped off the two pegs at the top that have the skulls on them. They just, you know, they weren't really glued in there, you know, just popped them off with some heat and uh, cut off the square vents at the bottom, those four vents at the bottom, and cut off the wheel on the side, and I think I shaved the tubes down on the side, or cut them, I think I cut those off, I can't remember. Um, and then I, uh, I cut a notch down the center, and then I took a piece of styrene and wedged the styrene down the down the middle of the pack. That way, I would have a, a ridge to build on um, with sculpt. And um, yeah, then I just added uh, a bunch of uh, epoxy sculpt to the sides, and then uh, layered it on the top and the bottom. Um, you know, just kept adding sculpt and, uh, what's it called, uh, shaping it into the, um, you know, kind of spade type shape that it, that it is, and, uh, until I got the basic outline out, and then, uh, kept sanding it, and a couple of places I had to add a little bit more sculpt to get the shape right, um, and on the back, I had to, um, or the the part that plugs into the to the figure. Um, I can't remember what I did. I had to um, modify it a little bit um, because I ended up having to shave down the the peg that it plugs into so that it would uh, it wouldn't be sticking out quite so far because uh, the original pack that um, that uh, port on the back is uh, is pretty um, wide or deep it's pretty deep so I had to basically cut most of that off and uh, so that it, the pack would sit closer to the figure and then coming up with a solution for the um, ridges um, the crescents that uh, pop up um, on the sides of the helmet, that was one of the most challenging things to come up with because um, I can sculpt, but that's a lot of very fine bit of sculpt work where you want everything to be symmetrical, everything to be the same size, and that, for me at least, is uh, a little too challenging to try to get everything perfect size and shape on both sides. Because you know you might be able to do a really good job on one, but trying to replicate that on the other side um, was going to be too much hassle for me. So uh, tried to look at a, uh, different materials to use, and uh, came up with the these uh, rubber gaskets, and um, they are you know a complete circle ring and 
ended up cutting, I cut them in half and then uh, cut them a half again um, down the middle and it uh, worked out well for the for the right shape so um, once I got the shape the way I wanted then I you know added more um, sculpt to build up the shoulders and then uh, cut them to just the right like crescent moons that I needed and then glued them on and then once they were glued on then I added more sculpt um, to fill in the um, the donut hole basically on each side and then later it dawned on me that um, you can't uh, <laughs> you can't really sp you can't spray paint rubber um, there are some fabric paints that you can use but um, rubber doesn't really rubber and silicone silicone um, in particular um, don't take paint very well especially spray paint whatever um, propellants are in the paint um, don't want to adhere to rubber they'll adhere to most plastics if it's specifically made paint made for plastic but rubber is an exception you know they're both um, petroleum based uh, materials that you know the paint may not be petroleum based uh, you know that's an, a, an acrylic a lacquer a uh, enamel paint is a petroleum based but um, the whatever propellants they use in the canned spray paint prevent uh, the acrylic paint from sticking so that was a screw up that I had to go back and fix um, by removing the spray paint and then adding uh, a, a water-based uh, gold paint um, like Citadel gold paint uh, over the rubber and then I was able to go back and, and spray paint it so yeah on the next one I'm probably gonna try and add um, a sculpt uh, put uh, up Abe's epoxy sculpt over those um, discs so that uh, and then I will be able to spray paint it and won't have to mess with um, brushing any paint on but uh, yeah otherwise um, once I've got everything um, sculpted then uh, you know it was pretty straightforward as far as um, painting I used a Krylon um, foil metallic gold paint and um, had to use quite a few uh, shades or you know coats but uh, was really happy with that and then I went back in and used uh, Citadel um, bronze uh, bright bronze and um, for the recessed areas uh, the helmet was kind of a challenge. I kept having to sand down the sides of the discs so that the helmet would fit in there um, because it was uh, is pretty wide. You know, I would love I would have loved to have a gap between the helmet and the um, those raised shoulder armors you know like it appears in the comics but there's just there wasn't enough real estate on that body you know given how big the helmet was um, you know I would have to build out the shoulders to a ridiculous width in order to uh, accommodate the helmet and also um, logistically or um, mechanically how it was gonna be able to wedge in there and um, and I didn't want to I didn't want to glue it in place. I wanted to be able to um, remove the the domes and uh, you know pop the helmet off. Or, you know I could put a um, unhelmeted head in there or whatever, or you know adjust it so that you could turn the head. Um, so you, you know wouldn't. If I wanted to photograph it, it wouldn't be just in the same static um, pose the entire time. So that was kind of a challenge to get the helmet. I had to 
do a lot of um, fine tuning um, as far as the um, the width of those discs and uh, positioning of the helmet so that it would go uh, inside so there wouldn't be a gap exposed and everything so that was a little challenging and um, yeah I think it turned out uh, turned out great don't need it's not it's just in there with friction there's no uh, there's no glue or sticky tack or uh, anything um, keeping that in place and I'll have to get into more detail on the on the red one the red version which I guess we'll go ahead and show that off now uh, on the red version um, it was you know a similar base body figure uh, they do make this figure in red but the red is a um, a brighter um, more uh, like cardinal red and um or it's a yeah it's more of a more of a cardinal red and so for this color i went with a rust-oleum uh cranberry um spray paint and uh that turned out to be the perfect color to match um how it looks in the comics um uh kind of wish it would be a little bit more glossy, but uh, overall, I'm I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Uh, let's see, same, pretty much same process except for the helmet. Uh, that one, you know, doesn't have the discs, so I needed to figure out how I'm going to keep that. Hel I wanted it also to be removable, and again, didn't you know? So I didn't want to glue it on. Uh, so. With a bunch of trial and error, I came up with uh, using uh, tubing from uh, aquarium, aquarium tubing, and took a piece, you know, several about two or three inches long, and then uh, cut that in you know length, and then uh, cut it in half, and um, just wrapped it around the back piece and then um, wedged the top or front uh, helmet piece on top of it so it's again just sitting there in you know friction wise um, it's there's nothing no no glue or anything else holding it in place so uh, you know you do have to be kind of fragile with it but um, but yeah I think it uh, it turned out really nicely um, both both chest armor uh, the arc reactors that was also a challenge to try to find the right size I um, I tried making some arc reactors out of uh, styrene material and that was just way too challenging to try to get the cuts perfect and I knew that it was going to be a disaster trying to glue them all symmetrically onto the chest piece um, you know trying to work with uh, glue is uh, is very challenging without making a huge mess and I didn't want you know to have to go back and try to you know remove excess glue and try to fill in gaps for all the little pieces that were gonna have to be used to to make the arc reactor so I wanted to use an existing piece first I tried making one out of um, a paper clip and um, and it just wasn't fine detail like the the shape I got pretty damn close but uh, you know trying to get a true triangle uh, or even you know uh, a rounded edged triangle was a little bit too challenging so I did find um, these are triangles used for jewelry making um, I think I found them on Amazon you get like a, a pack of uh, 20 for like ten dollars or something like that so um, yeah those turned out really well and um, I think I'm going to use a slightly different uh, version of that for for the the second figure that I'm making but uh, overall very happy with the way it turned out and uh, then just you know painted the uh, on the red version just painted that gold and then on the um, the gold 
figure. I painted that uh, white. Uh, I did want to go back in and um, add sculpt to make it a little bit flatter, but uh, after I painted, I was pretty happy with uh, you know I just put a ton of white paint in there, and uh, it kind of hid all the imperfections of the of the sculpt. So yeah, hopefully you guys like the review. You share with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already, and always love hearing back from you guys, so please leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. That's crispy.